my god, my earrings. Y'all keep insisting on a makeup tutorial. Trust me, it's coming. I know I bring it to you every time, but they're also on Instagram. Like, I do the same thing every time, y'all. Hi, my name's Frederick. Welcome to not Pride Month anymore. Turns out the companies that really care about Pride, they also really care about getting rid of that logo. 12 a.m., not even an hour in. Whoever these interns are managing this, kudos to you, you're on time. But I would just like to clarify to anyone who's like, I like these Pride logos, 99% of them still donate to anti-LGBT organizations and senators and have homophobic people running the business. So no, they don't care. Please up your standards for companies. I went to Pride for the first time. Well, first time in New York City. I technically did do a video, I think, talking about going to my first Pride parade, but that was in Pittsburgh. And it wasn't really a parade. It was more like one lane block even. No, New York City, if you live here, it was insane. I don't want to talk about it today and just discuss the meaning of Pride Month and these parades and what it means for someone to be able to go there because I, there's a lot to it than just like party. Party. Underage people next to alcohol, like it, it's a lot. And there's some debates going on about what Pride Parade should be like, and I want to discuss them because this is like a bad commentary channel now. First of all, I didn't really record much of me there. I preferred to enjoy the moment, and also I had this much space to actually use my phone. Like there's no social distancing. There was no point in me talking to my camera because literally you can't hear me. I went with my friend, Caroline. It was at Union Square. There were multiple Pride Parades going on, but like the main one is usually Union Square and just like 14th Street to 10th Street. Here's the fire for what it was supposed to be like. It was so many blocks. I lost count. I don't know where to go after that. I was expecting like just one street of people walking down and I'm pretty sure there was an actual march. This was more like a fair with a lot of stands and people just walking around and having fun. It was also like 90 degrees, I think. 95 maybe, if you count like humidity. And I know we can't really move Pride Month because it should be in June and I'll explain. Maybe we do like another one, like a mini one during fall so I can at least wear this and not be scared of sweating my ass off. In Australia, y'all can't relate because apparently it's winter when it's June. I don't know, don't quote me, let me know. So this is my outfit. It was pretty cute. I know. I know. I do own the color green now. Y'all know my gripe with that color. We're, we're bonding again. You're probably thinking, Frederick, why'd you wear thick denim jeans that are high-waisted so that you can't even breathe out of your stomach? That outfit only allowed for high-waisted white jeans. You think I would go in my one pair of shorts? <laughs> From Hollister? I started technically at 11 a.m. and ended at six. I met with my friend, Caroline, who is an ally. So the people who saw that TikTok, yes, she's my friend. That's why I called her a straight. Things I saw at NYC Pride, a straight. And we met at two because I slept in until 12 and took two hours to get ready. And, uh, but when we got there, like there were still a lot of people. The moment I got up, someone already recognized me because you don't have to wear masks outside anymore. New York City has fully reopened as of like three weeks ago, I think. And because of that, people now can recognize me because I, no one saw me for a year when I had my mask on, which I was fine with because I did not want to socially interact. But just a heads up for anyone who ever sees me, even if I'm looking like I'm rushing to somewhere or maybe I'm about to cry, say hi to me. I always love seeing you all and being able to meet you and take pictures. Don't be scared. I'm tired of people DMing me and being like, I think I saw you at Fifth Avenue and 16th Street. Like what? Then why didn't you say something? And I didn't take pictures with everyone I met, but I think it was like over 15 people, which was so fun. I don't want to out them by accident because not everyone who goes to Pride Parade is out of the closet. Overall, the experience was great. Like they had free Coke, like Diet Coke, not the... <laughs> Let me reward that. They had free drinks for people out there, which I think is nice considering it was really hot. So they had Diet Coke, Honest Tea, Yerba Mate or Yerba Mate. I don't know how to pronounce it. Smart Water. They had a lot of food. We waited for 30 minutes for an empanada, but it was a good empanada. I saw, this was the best part, dicks. <laughs> like actual cake. It was more like a waffle batter, but it was shaped like a genitalia. An eggplant with two basketballs on it, you would say. And it tasted good. Like you could choose between a chocolate version, a vanilla, you could have a surprise one that's like pink too and white. I think it cost $8, which like fine. <laughs> really fun themed foods. And this is when people were like, wait, why is there an actual dick at Pride Parade? There's children there. And this is what people are discussing. Like, should we have inappropriate, stu inappropriate stuff out of Pride? Should we make it safe for work for everyone? You know, not 18 plus. 
And my opinion is that if you plan to bring your kid at Pride, and I'm, when I say kid, I mean like a child. What would you do if there was a child right in front of you? I mean an actual kid who doesn't really understand the different aspects of like sexuality and like sex. As much as it's nice to have supportive parents who bring their child out of Pride, maybe not here, you're gonna see stuff. Like there, there will be people basically boobs out. Nothing wrong against that. I loved seeing that. It was so fun. Jock straps and just be mindful of that. It's, it's sort of the same thing I have with like parenting and people allowing their child to go on TikTok at such a young age. Like that's up to you. And it's only downhill from there. I do think there should be two versions of Pride though. Like a one for kids and one for like adults, teens, but I'm not a manager, so I don't know how hard that is to do and probably wouldn't be good financially. Let me know what y'all think. I still think it depends mainly on the parent. I shouldn't judge someone for simply wanting to free the girls or the PP, like let them do what they want. Do I think there should be actual sex? There? No, but that's not really a normal thing. Like that's just a thing that happens in general here. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. I didn't really see that stuff. It was mainly like people in cool outfits. And when I see outfits, I mean like people in full on Billy Porter Met Gala outfits, an asexual dinosaur suit, which could probably like overheat someone at that point because it's 95 degrees and I don't know how much insulation is in there. I saw the Target Pride suits. I'm so I saw them. Oh, why'd y'all bring them? It's fine. I didn't, I didn't judge anyone. I didn't yell at them. Let them live their truth. As for like the actual entertainment, we had people dancing in groups. We had people twerking, which I could never do. So all respect to them. <laughs> jealous of them because I wish I could do it. Uh, there was a drag queen, which apparently was Tina Burner. I didn't even know that and I didn't get the recording, but here are some clips of it. It was hard to get to the front. I'm sorry I'm short, God damn it. but she was there. There were a lot of other drag queens there. I'm not sure if there were like any people from Drag Race there besides her, but there was a lot of speakers around so you could just dance and hang out with people. And also, there were free HIV testing spots or just like STD testing spots. And that I find so amazing to know that first of all it's more accessible than it ever was and that they're just giving it away there which i don't know how they did that i didn't go up there i didn't know what kind of test it was but either way they had that available for people and i think it's nice for them to start breaking that stigma of like you should not be embarrassed to go get a test because it's important and it's good for your safety so please get tested regularly and be safe if you plan on doing the thing and if i can find any other clips i'll put them right here but that is basically all i have to say about pride <laughs> Did I almost cry at some points? Yes, because at that point, I had never seen so many queer people congregated in a setting besides my channel. It's weird, but it's also like so uplifting to be able to see that many people because I may come off as like a confident, borderline delusional person on here, but in real life, I do have insecurities and I'm not always outspoken. So like that was the first time I ever wore anything of truly feminine clothing. I never worn any crop top like that or like a puffy sleeve outside because I've always insecure about it and I was just afraid of you know walking down the street and someone just saying the f word to me never happened when I wore that granted I'm also very lucky to live in New York City but the fact that that was the first time I ever did that and I was afraid to be judged but then people started complimenting me yes that fueled my ego 100% and that felt good because you should be able to express yourself however you want with that being said Let's talk about the other versions of Pride Month. First of all, I know there's a lot of people who are closeted, can't go to parades, can't express themselves, even online or in private. And I think it's important to say like, yes, while Pride Month is nice for us to be able to be more proud of who we are and out there, it's important for us to acknowledge that there's a lot of people who can't do that and that they're either living vicariously through us or sometimes a little bit jealous because you know, I would be too. I was when I saw people at Pride Parades on YouTube. But I want to make sure people here know that just because you're closeted or you're not sure about your sexuality, do not feel pressure to come out. 
I think Pride Month does that though. We've sort of pushed this idea of like, be yourself, be free, be out. Not always. I don't want people to feel they need to come out. Like I get DMs saying, you know, Frederick, like I'm not really sure about my sexuality, but I feel like I should come out to my parents, even though I've already came out to my friends. I don't know if they'll accept me though, but I just feel this need to. And I'm like, what does that feeling stem from? Is that something within you? that you feel like if I don't come out, I will never be my true self? If so, that's a different story. But if you really feel pressured to because of Hollywood media or just seeing representation online, like Jojo Siwa coming out is gonna influence people to come out too. Seeing all these big coming out stories online, especially with celebrities, can make it seem like that event has to be the peak of your life, like a big event. It really doesn't. Some people don't even need to come out. My friend Kiana said she never really had to. It was just like a, hey, my girlfriend is blank. My point is, it doesn't necessarily have to be this big event you dedicate your life to because sometimes people feel like they have to do that in order for it to be a coming out story. Now, not everyone has to come out actually. Like you can literally be yourself without the need to say it to others. And I would like to clarify, I, while I appreciate the DMs of people asking me for advice, I'm not a therapist, so I don't want you to take my advice like that, which is why I don't really answer the how to come out questions because I've always said, I don't know your life personally. Your friends know you more than me. Trust them, trust their words first before mine. If you truly want to come out, start off with the people who you know will accept you back, even if it's online or anonymous. Like, do it in the comment section, that's fine. No one knows your name. Call yourself like Jimin's left foot or something and you'll be fine. That is like a form of coming out. It lets you feel normal about saying it. I remember the first time I said I'm gay, I was like, ooh, I said it. And now it's like, yeah, not really special anymore. <laughs> There's too many of us out there. But start slow. Don't go to parents first. If you want to, obviously go ahead, but don't freak out about it. There's no timeline to coming out. You can take all the time you want. Nothing should pressure you, not even people, because it's something you can do when you want to, if you want to, and that's basically all I can say. I don't know your life, so I don't know if you should even come out to your parents or what way will be effective, because there is no one way to come out. That's all I have to say about that. Other stuff we talk about at Pride is, should there be kink at Pride? <laughs> Ooh, this is a question. So if you don't know what that means, um, Stop watching. You're a little too young to be watching this and I'd rather not be the person who teaches you about it, but kink is basically some form of sexual, let's say, interaction. <laughs> Something that gets people going that isn't necessarily the norm. It's not just, oh, let's do it in the bedroom. It's some people like the idea of leather being involved or, you know, you know, chains and whips excite me, Rihanna. Those things are kinks. You have other stuff that can be like a little more taboo. And I'm not gonna say because I'd rather still have a channel after this, but a lot of people say that you shouldn't have kink at Pride. It's inappropriate to the children. Which once again, that is you bringing your children there. So what did you expect? Everyone has the right to express themselves. Also, leather itself, like wearing leather chaps is not a kink. It's a fashion statement. I think that people are misconstruing like what a kink actually is. It's like seeing something that is happening between two people that is kinky itself. That's what I would say is a kink. Not just someone wearing chains or wearing a choker. No, wearing leather chaps or wearing leather panties is not itself a kink. It could be inappropriate to some people who are parents or just sex repulsed or just children because once again, I don't think children should be exposed to that. So we don't bring them to pride. There is no world where everyone is going to stop wearing what they want to for the sake of children. Next up, should there even be a Pride Month? What's the point of Pride Month? Why isn't there a Veterans Month? I know there's this thing that's like a pick me gay on TikTok. I'm a little old, so I don't really know what that means. Even though I'm technically Gen Z, I still feel outdated. I'll talk about the Veterans Month. Thing. Actually, I'll let a veteran talk about the Veterans thing. How come gay people get a whole month with military and veterans only get two days? Can we just stop weaponizing veterans to promote homophobia? Because if you actually cared about the military like you say you do, you would know that the entire month of May is Military Appreciation Month, and you'd also know that the month of November is for veterans. Also, we get multiple days throughout the year. If you actually cared, you'd do your own research, but you just want an excuse to be homophobic. The only people I ever hear make comments like these are not in the military, nor have they served a day in their life. You choose to stay silent about military celebrations all month long, but the second Pride Month starts is when you choose to complain? Whose fault is it that it's not talked about enough? Your own. Most people in the military and veterans don't actually care. We get benefits and free stuff all year long. We don't need any of the extra stuff. So can we please just stop romanticizing the military? Do you actually care about the homeless, mentally ill veterans that are on the street right now? And if you claim you do, what do you do to make a difference, Susan? 
So it goes to show that it was never about your respect for the military, you just want to demonize Pride. As you've heard from an actual veteran, that's why Pride Month exists. But let me tell you a little bit about why it's in June and why it has to be, why it has to be a thing. Let's start off with the fact that it's not a trend that's recently happened. Gay people didn't just poof, come out of nowhere. It's been documented for year, for thousands of years. In fact, actual animals have been known to be homosexual too. So before you go calling it a you know, 2000s Gen Z trend, look back a little bit. Similar to how you had women's rights marches or Black History Month or just any event week or month that is dedicated to a marginalized group, the same thing is with Pride Month. It was started through uprisings. So I don't know my whole history, but Stonewall, which was not mainly about gay rights, it was also about police brutality at the time against black people, especially black trans people. You had ones in San Fran, LA, which is not coincidental that these three cities are known for having the biggest prior approach. It's because it kind of started there in terms of the protests and riots. It was kind of that tipping point of like, we're done with your shit, we're going to start being active about this. And you had a lot of protests come after that. And I know there's a lot of people we like to say like Marsha P. Johnson and I don't know the other names, I'm sorry, I'll list them right here. But there's a whole documentary about her and why it started here. And it was mainly to provide awareness and to fight for equality or just at least basic rights. And it also happened on my birthday, June 28th. Yes, I'm 20 now in this video. Our birthday video is coming. Just be patient. So Pride Month was dedicated to June because of that. But you also had the legalization of gay marriage on June 26th, which I don't think they plan to do during Pride Month. It's just a nice thing to happen. God said you will be born during Pride Month, Frederick, so you're welcome for that. But for people who say Pride Month is just an excuse for companies to push rainbow gay merch and profit off of gay people. Do you think gay people wanted that? Do you think we had a choice? Do you think every queer person put a petition down and it's like, companies, y'all need to acknowledge this. No, they did that themselves. I think I can speak for a majority of people in general that we wanted equality and um, to be treated fairly and equally in court and be represented by the government too, rather than a rainbow blazer that costs $40. Like I think, are we seeing a difference here in terms of what capitalism wants versus what actual gay people want. It's different. Like it's also the same way they start to profit off of other movements. And I think like especially like breast cancer awareness, they start making pink merch, you know, and all this stuff. It's not what that group wanted. At the end of the day, a company doing that profits them mainly. We just get to see an ounce of representation and like, oh, thanks for the, thanks for the pin during the month of June only. And while I can be mad at someone for not understanding why Pride Month is the way it is, I can also understand that, yeah, maybe you didn't learn that. I doubt your high school teacher even mentioned that in history because they didn't tell me. I had to look it up myself on Google. And it's what they are, they're exposed to. If you're only exposed to like queer representation in the form of companies and not like an actual person in your life, you're probably gonna go to that conclusion. But for people to say that we shouldn't have a Pride Month because other people should. Let's clear up the fact that veterans have never, will never probably be discriminated against by other people. I think it's well known, at least in America, that we always appreciate our veterans and we always appreciate the military. Well, maybe not the military, but like the people who serve at least. But keep in mind, there are queer people who are serving too. And sometimes they're not even allowed to serve like trans people. So. That's why there's a Pride Month, because we'd rather have that uh, allowed. We'd rather let our people serve when they want to serve. And while I can't compare like being bullied in high school to actually fighting in a war and risking your life, what you're setting up is basically saying, why isn't there straight pride? Why isn't there a white people month? Because you don't need it. You've never needed it. <laughs> Those groups have never had to deal with being marginalized, having their rights taken away. Why do you think civil rights was a thing? Like I. Why do you think the women's suffrage movement was a the thing? They didn't have equality, so they pushed for it. So yeah, maybe Pride Month is glossed over by the fact that companies shove out so much stuff that we don't want. But the root of it is to push for acceptance. And I don't want anyone to get it twisted. The gay shit I post is not gonna stop in June, okay? We're gonna be posting every day. Pride Month, it should be every month. That's the goal, at least, is that you should be able to be prideful of yourself every day. It's not just, goodbye gay people, back to the closet I go, until next June. No, it's the fact that I get to be even more outspoken this month and y'all can't stop me. I get to wear what I want on the subway and y'all can't stop me. I get to get a free drink and y'all can't stop me because it's Pride Month. And yes, apparently my friend got a free drink 
because they said it was Pride Month at Starbucks. I don't know if that's true. I saw it on TikTok too, but either way, as they should. And I'm gonna give some, and finally, I'm gonna give some tips as to what you should do when you go to Pride. First up, bring water. Jesus Christ, you need, you need it. Second of all, bring touch-ups. If you're wearing makeup, I had to touch up my face like seven times. Not even putting foundation back on, like I didn't even wear it. I wore eye makeup and blush only. It's just the fact that I had to powder my face because I was oily and sweaty and it's just, uh, don't pack a backpack. You will be sweating on your back all day. Pack like a tote bag instead or just a purse. Don't, don't wear jeans. Unless you really want to do it for the girls, you know, wear the beautiful outfit and show off, go ahead. But if you want to actually be able to walk and dance without worrying about your legs turning into sausages, I probably shouldn't have to say this, but shower after, like immediately. Bring a fan. I was so mad I didn't bring my big red fan when I went there, but a lot of people had theirs and it helps because wind, comfort, air. And finally, have fun. There's no such a nice miscongeniality answer. <laughs> Obviously, Pride at the end of the day should just be about that. Be yourself, express yourself. Next year, I'll definitely do a meet and greet and I'll announce it like on Instagram or something. And that's all I have. This concludes, actually it doesn't. This concludes the end of Pride Month, but not the end of my Pride videos. <laughs> Cause I still got three more in the back for y'all. I just had to prioritize some other stuff. So if you enjoyed, give this video a like, leave a comment down below about what you did at Pride, and if not, what you wanna do next time. Subscribe for more videos every week. I am going to be moving next week, so I apologize if it's late by then. Don't be surprised if I don't upload by next week, but keep the notifications on. You better turn them on. You turn me on. Okay, I'll shut up. Social medias are right here. Go follow them right now. Are you doing it? Okay, and I love you all, and everything is less than three.